Welcome back to another video on Chosen Infinity. I hope you are having an amazing, blessed day. Now for today's video, we look towards San Francisco, California, United States in the year 1915 for the World's Fair called Panama Pacific International Exposition. Now if you have been following with my videos that I post on my channel, you know that I'm really fascinated with these world fairs because it seems like this is part of a history that isn't told and isn't you know emphasized enough in my opinion and just seeing all these amazing architectures you know that were built in a short amount of time according to um, what they give us and these expositions are where people you know millions at a time go and to see these innovations and new technologies and showcasing pavilions and a whole bunch of different stuff and it just seems like it's been wiped from the history books because i certainly wasn't taught about this in my history classes and i doubt neither were you to begin with i just want to look at what quote unquote they tell us and give us about this Panama Pacific Exposition and I just want to state before I get into it that Wikipedia and me using it is by no means a reliable source I'm just seeing what you know they give us and what quote unquote mainstream media and history tell us about you know this world's fair so accordingly it happened and opened between February 20th to to December the 4th 1915 its stated purpose was to celebrate the completion of the Panama Canal but it was widely seen in the city as an opportunity to showcase its recovery from the 1906 earthquake. The fair was constructed on a 636 acre site along the northern shore between the Presidio and Fort Mason now known as the Marina District. So what caught my eye about this expedition, exposition is that like a lot of other warfares, it attracted a lot of people. So as you can see here, it's listed as nearly 19 million. And as I stated before, this was you know not really many years after the disaster of the 1906 earthquake. Also something interesting to point out is that during the 1910s in San Francisco the population was approximately 400,000. So if that's 400,000 and this exposition has a visitor of nearly 19 million, this bears the question, where did all these people come from? Looking at the architecture, you'll come across the centerpiece, which was the Tower of Jewels, and according to Wikipedia, rose to 435 feet and was covered with over 100,000 cut glass Nova gems. The three quarter to two inch coloured gems sparkled in the sunlight throughout the day and were illuminated by over 50 powerful electrical searchlights at night which we have to look at and question where do they get all this electricity from okay did they have the technology did they possess the type of you know technology to cut glass like this was there any you know glass manufacturers at san francisco at this time that could have produced such um abundant amount so this tower of jewels is quote unquote the main attraction and the thing you look at the pan pacific exposition and it's the thing that you think of so looking at the construction there is no specific year that was given as a start date but it is said like the other wool fairs that it was made out of staff and plaster and wasn't made out of stone 
the lighting at the fair is what makes this exposition even more amazing and spectacular and standing out out of its all its kind now the lighting was you know loaned to a young general electric company eager to promote the miracles of you know a new technology by wdrc who was called the aladdin of the 1915 city luminous the enormous colored rays that you see behind the tower of jewels in many of the famous photos is done by a machine called the scintillator which stood behind the tower of jewels and enlightening the night sky in a beautiful display of wonder. Unfortunately, many of these buildings were destroyed and demolished as they were seen as temporal, but there are still some buildings that remain from this exposition. The most noticeable one is the Palace of Fine Arts. It was damaged throughout the years but was restored and you can still go visit it. On the nationalparkservice.gov website, it talks about the legacy of the Panama Pacific International Exposition. Now here on the success 
of the fair, I want to highlight where it says, on the last day of operation, the fair experienced a record setting 450,000 visitors. Again, I want to ask the question, where did all these people come from? What, you know, accommodation were given to them? You know, hotels and where do they stay? Remember, this is not many years after the 1906 earthquake. How did these people get transported to this fair? So here it talks about um, removing of many of the buildings of the fair. So I'm just going to skip past this. I'll link this down in the description if you guys want to go check this out as well. The vestiges of the fair throughout the city of San Francisco. The site also goes into the prologue to this exposition and the construction of the Panama Canal which was a very ambitious but also successful engineering feat that led to a celebration with this world fair. So here it talks about Ruben Hale and his merchant associates asking Congress in 1904 for 5 million dollars to create this exposition. As we know two years later, the disaster struck in San Francisco with the Great Earthquake. For this last part, I just want to let the photo speak for itself and as always sit back, relax and enjoy this slideshow that I put together. Mm -hmm.